What's up bakers, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about banatones, what they are, how to use them, how to prevent your dough from sticking, and of course, where you can get them. As you can see, banatones come in all different shapes and sizes. They even make giant ones if you wanna make giant loaves of bread. A banatone is used to help support the loaf during its final rise. It's particularly good for higher hydration or wetter doughs. The most common ones are cane, wicker, and broad form. Cane, wicker, and wood pulp, or also known as broad form. They come in all different shapes and sizes, but the most common being round for boule and oval for retard. But you can also get square ones, triangle ones, these ones for coron, bigger round ones for bigger boules, even bigger round ones for even bigger boules. The shape of your banatone will really depend on what kind of bread you make. Now my personal preference is to make batards in the oval ones, but there is a time and place for round ones. Porridge breads bake nicely in here, or it's a good way to differentiate another variety of bread. Maybe you wanna bake all of your country sours in here and all of your breads with inclusions in here. Whatever you do, it's totally up to you. There are no right or wrong answers. For sizing, you'll also have to decide what size of loaf you want to make. My personal preference is to make 900 gram batards, and I use these 12 inch brought foreman or these 14 inch wicker line baskets. If you're making smaller breads, like a 750 gram, something like this 10 inch rattan would be a good fit for you. For your round banatones for baking boules, I use a nine inch diameter banatone and I'll put a 900 gram boule in here. But you could also put a 750 in here. So it really depends what you're making. If you're baking a bread with 100% whole grain or a German style rye bread, you might wanna use something like this that has a flatter bottom. If you want something with a bit more volume and height, this is a good fit for you. If you're making lower hydration breads, a couche can work very well, but with a high hydration bread, the loaves tend to go flat when they're resting, so the banatone is gonna help them hold their shape and give you that beautiful aesthetic on your final loaf. Banatones can be used for yeasted breads, sourdough breads, and even gluten-free bread. I've got some dough ready to go in the banatone, and I'm gonna show you how I prep the banatone. So I've already picked out what I wanna use for this bake, <clears throat> and we're gonna mix a few up just to show you a couple different ones. And then on the shelf behind me here, I keep some dusting flour. Dusting flour is made up of equal parts rice flour, rye, and usually I add coarse bran, but I didn't have any. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our baskets and we're going to just dust the banatones. Okay? So when you first start out, if you've never used the banatone before, like this one, which is brand new, you can spray it with a bit of water and dust it with flour and it kind of dries out and coats it. I just prefer to put a heavier coating on it. So a little bit more and eventually it sort of cures or it gets set for your baking. So we'll do a couple of these. And you can use a sifter if you'd like it to be really nice. I don't like the way that plain rice flour looks on the loaf. So that's why I use a combination of the two. I really like the way that the rye shows up. For this particular loaf, we're gonna put it right into the banatone. So I'll show you one here. We're just going to scoop this up. I'm gonna give it a bit of a press in half and stick the two sides together. And that's gonna go into the banatone there. You can see it fits snug. And by tomorrow, it'll relax and it'll be sort of filled out the banatone. It's also gonna to continue to grow, so you wanna make sure that it's not overly full. Next, let's do a boule. I'm gonna do the same thing and just stick this in here. Now, my personal preference isn't really to make boules. I don't make them that often, um, but that's it. And so, I'm gonna get the rest of these shaped up into the banatone, and tomorrow we'll take a look at how to take them out of the banatone. Once I've placed the breads into the banatones, I cover them with a plastic bag. You can also use a shower cap, works very well. 
and you can just kind of pop that on there like that. Now, in many bakery fridges, they have a controlled environment where the fridge is humid enough that they don't get a skin, but I'm just using a home fridge like most home bakers are, and the dough will get a very bad skin on it, and it doesn't bake up very well. So I throw a bag on it, and I just make sure that there's a little bit of air in the bag and that the bag isn't touching the dough because it will develop some condensation. So just sort of pull it up. I like to I'll show you. So I like to just take the bag, put it into the corner, and I just reuse these bags over and over and over. They've been through hundreds of loaves of bread. Uh, and that's it, we'll put them in the fridge and we'll take a look at them tomorrow before we bake them. It's time to flip our breads out of our banatones and get them baking. And we're gonna show how easy they come out and we're gonna look at the different styles of banatone and what that does to the loaf. Different styles here, so we've got our long, wicker line basket, we've got our short fat wicker basket, our one for boule, and of course our wood pulp waffle pattern. So what we're gonna do first is, I'm gonna flip these out onto parchment. It depends on the oven you're going into, you may not need parchment. I'm using it here today so that if I have to move them I can. And I'm just gonna slowly let this fall out of the basket and you should see it comes out with ease. So our next one, same thing, it just kind of falls out. I'm gonna just adjust the portion so I can fit everything onto here. And I'm not really doing anything. You can see I just flip it out and it falls out on its own. Our breads are out of the oven and they look fantastic. You can see a little bit of difference in between them. This one is a bit short and fat. This one is longer. Of course, this is our round bool. And at the front here, we have our one with the waffle pattern. You can see I got a little snagged here on the score, but it still looks great. And of course, we still have to score and bake our giant loaves. We're gonna do the large batard with just a single slash right down the middle. And then on the pool, we'll do sort of a three across and one across on an angle to give it a really nice expansion and some really cool aesthetic. Our giant loaves are out of the oven, and as you can see, they are quite big. So this is from our large batard, and this is our large bool. It's actually almost as big as my daughter Frankie. <laughs> Hello. It's hot, don't touch. And this one's bigger than her head. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these upside down on top of my oven so that they can dry out. If you don't dry them out, eventually they'll start to mold. So I'm gonna flip them upside down on the oven and when they're dry, I'll show you how to clean them. Now that our banatones are dried, we're gonna clean them with a potato brush. So all I do is give it a good scrub. I like to do this outside usually. Okay. You can bang it out. And you can see there's no bits of flour in there. It looks clean. We're gonna put this back up top and we're ready for our next bake. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video if you found value in the video. Also, I've got a load of other recipes, guides, tips and tricks on my YouTube and my blog. I'll see you all in the next video.